another day, another MCP2. But this one is special. Today, we are going to go over newly released EKS MCP server. This is the official Kubernetes MCP server released and maintained by AWS. This one will rule them all. In today's video, we are going to go over what is it, why this one is a game changer, how can you use this to get job interviews and demand more money. We're also gonna have a hands-on demo. In this demo, MCP is going to create the EKS cluster. Not me, MCP. MCP will write the deployment file. I will mess up the deployment file. Sneaky of me, right? But MCP will fix it. All this in minutes with plain English. Before you jump into the demo, let's understand the concepts so you can explain it to the interviewer. We all love Kubernetes, but managing Kubernetes is pain. So what are the three big ways to manage Kubernetes? First is the traditional way. That's how I have been managing Kubernetes for a long time. In traditional way, you Google search the steps, you implement it, something goes wrong, you give the error in the Google search, then you implement it, cycle continues, takes days. Then came large language model. Large language model makes it a little bit easier. You can ask large language model to write you a Terraform file, or you can give it the error that the Kubernetes cluster is giving and large language model gives you the answer. But LLM cannot take any action. So you copy from the LLM response, paste it in the Kubernetes cluster. It might fix it, might not. And LLM works with pre-trained data. If a new Kubernetes version comes up, the LLM might not know about all the nuances of this new version. In some cases, like Kubernetes GPT, it is a little bit more advanced. However, it is limited to troubleshooting. It does help you a good bit, but it still takes hours. Then came LLM with MCP capability. And specifically for this EKS MCP server, it can create cluster, write YAML files. For example, you could ask it to write ingress files, helm charts, etc. It can fix issues and take actions. That's right. It's all autonomous. It can read the command output from the terminal. It can change the YAML in the IDE and you can take action with all the other context that happened before. And you will see this in action in today's demo. You don't need to memorize kubectl commands. You can just use natural language or plain English to explain what you want to do and it will do it. It takes minutes. This will definitely be the future. So I highly encourage you to learn and practice this. So what is this EKS MCP server? This is the high level architecture. So you need to have a MCP host, which will have access to a large language model and an MCP client. For today's demo purposes, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code along with Klein, which will be interacting with our Kubernetes cluster. It knows which Kubernetes cluster to interact with because it has access to the kubeconfig file. This MCP client will interact with EKS MCP server. This EKS MCP server uses many different tools. It has a tool for creating EKS cluster. This lot many MCP servers cannot do. We have tools to write and deploy Kubernetes resources to read pod logs. And the cool feature is this EKS MCP server is the official MCP server from AWS. And it has been trained on years of EKS troubleshooting knowledge that AWS has. So this MCP server also comes with troubleshooting and fixing error capability, and it's really good. Another thing to keep in mind, this is the beauty of MCP. Okay, let's say you are using the agentic chat to say create a case cluster, deploy my stuff, fix my issues. But if you say, hey, what is the price of Amazon DynamoDB? Okay, maybe you are using DynamoDB with this architecture. Now you can have another MCP server right for AWS cost, which is another official AWS MCP server. And you can just plug it in to the same MCP host. So this is just plug and play and you don't have to switch your context. That's, that's how the name came in, right? Model context protocol. So you don't have to switch context and copy paste from a bunch of tools to the LLM. So you can plug and play different MCP servers outside of this Kubernetes MCP making it even more powerful. All right, with that, let's jump into the demo. This is my trusty Visual Studio code. I am using the extension called Klein. If you want to know how to set up Klein step by step, 
I have another separate video, please check it out. So I'm just going to type my task here. Can you install EKS MCP server from AWS Labs? Found the EKS MCP server from AWS Labs and now it will update the MCP settings. All right, our client MCP setting is updated to connect to this EKS MCP server. All right, let's save this. Okay, so if I go here, here we go, EKS MCP server is active. I'm going to ask for it to create a new EKS cluster. By default, it creates an EKS auto cluster. How is it doing that? It has access to my AWS account using AWS credentials, right? So you have to type AWS configure, give your access key, secret access key, region, all that good stuff. So now that MCP server is installed, I'm going to ask it to create a new EKS cluster. All right, so it asks for the new EKS cluster name, EKS MCP test cluster. Okay, look, client wants to use a tool on the AWS Labs EKS MCP server. See how automatically it determines the correct tool to use, right? So let's say approve, I'm gonna speed up this process. If you want the latest cloud interview guide, including Gen AI interview questions and their answers with average answers that most candidates give and delightful answers that sets you apart and get you hired, go to cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. Again, cloudwithraj.com slash newsletter. All right, back to the episode. So it actually created the cloud formation and submitted it. All right, while the cluster is being deployed, let's ask it to create a Nginx deployment. Look how it is changing it in the IDE. Is this cool or what? Okay, so we are going to do a little bit of trickery here. Okay, so this image, so this is the actual container which is getting from Docker Hub, right? So I'm going to change this to engine Y. Okay, so that should give a image pool error. So I'm going to save this. Now we are going to wait till the EKS cluster is up and running. All right, let's ask it to deploy the Nginx deployment. Okay, so it's figured out that kubectl is not installed. So it's running the command. See this stuff, you have to go do all this stuff yourself, but now it's just doing it. Okay, so now if I run kubectl get pods dash A, so it lists all the pod, but see it's giving the error image pool back off because we intentionally changed the name of the container from engine X to engine Y. And guess what? I'm going to ask it to fix this for me. I'm not gonna go Google and troubleshoot all that stuff. I simply typed in, can you figure out the issue with my pods and fix it? Check the current pod status to see if the issues exit and all that stuff, okay? Okay, look, it figured out the issue. It's showing me the deployment file and it even changed it. It changed it from engine Y to engine X. And now if I save this, it will ask me if it can deploy it and it will do that as well. Because we know the kubectl command, so if we do kubectl get pods dash a now, all right, see, now our pods are running. We asked MCP to create the EKS cluster, which it did. It also wrote the deployment YAML for engine X. Then I changed the deployment YAML to introduce some error. It determined the error and fixed it. And all this in minutes, I used just plain English to tell what to do. Now comes the big question. All right, the big question. Will this replace jobs? And how can you use this to your advantage? One thing is clear, SRE and infrastructure bar will go up. What do I mean? More will be expected, especially for entry-level jobs. So previously, if you are a entry-level SRE or entry-level cloud engineer, infrastructure engineer, the management would say, all right, go create this EKS cluster, write a Terraform, write Helm charts, write me this deployment file, and you can take a couple weeks. But now, because with these tools, they will say, all right, use this and get it done faster. That's for sure coming. Some of you ask me that, but will not this be expensive? LLM cost is a non-issue. I did this demo and of course I had to play around with it before I recorded the video and I used it extensively for hours 
and it costed me like 75 cents. So this will be way cheaper than hourly rate of an employee, right? So cost is a non-issue and you are seeing this in action as well as the time goes on, the models are becoming cheaper and cheaper. However, security will be a bigger issue. For example, if you search in MCP marketplace, Kubernetes, there are 20 different Kubernetes tools. Some of it from some weird GitHub repository. You do not know if they are good or they are bad because these MCP tools can execute commands. You have to be careful. Security organizations need to solve before this gets widely adopted. There are still kinks, right? For example, when the MCPs analyze the troubleshooting or create a cluster, sometimes it will try to run command that is not necessary. It goes in a path that is not really ideal. So in that cases, you need to have the knowledge of the infrastructure and what it is doing so you can reject those commands. So again, for the experienced people, that is the value you are going to bring in addition to your domain knowledge and the knowledge of the architecture. And as always with technology, if you adopt this, this will be fine. Some of you say that, okay, so if this does this this much faster, won't it reduce the numbers? That's not how it goes. So if you think about it, all these big techs, Amazon, Google, Facebook, they said, okay, if we are gonna hire a lot more developers, does that mean that they will be done adding functionality? No, then they would stop hiring developers by now. But customers want more and more. They want more features, new technology come up. So as your time gets free up from using these tools, you will be assigned something else because this is emerging technology and with any emerging technologies, new jobs, new functionalities come up. The same thing happened when the internet revolution was going on, the dot com, as well as when we are switching from brick and mortar to internet, horses to the car, industrialization, etc. And if you adopt this and showcase this in your resume and GitHub, you can even demand more money and you can even attract recruiter to get interviews faster. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.